Today, I'm gonna show you how I built a 3D naturalistic background and bioactive enclosure for my ball python. So let's get to it. So I'm using a ZooMed 36 by 18 by 18 double door enclosure, it's essentially a 40 gallon. I'm gonna wipe it all down with isopropyl alcohol. Next I'm using the Pond and Stone Great Stuff. I prefer using this because if you miss any spots when covering the background, the black blends in a lot better. But it is three times as expensive and much harder to come by. And I set the core bark into the foam before it starts to cure and add a little bit of support along the sides. This is the gaps and cracks great stuff. It's much easier to come by and usually a lot less expensive. I think I got this for like two and a half, three dollars a can. Remember when applying this as a background that it will expand three to five times the initial size. After covering the entire background, I get a piece of cork bark, a nice focal piece, and set it right into the great stuff. And you gotta be quick, cause you wanna do this before it starts to cure. And again, I add some supports along the sides to firmly hold the cork bark in place. If your cork bark is moving around a lot, you can always use painter's tape or something similar to hold it into place. Now you can see how much it expanded after it cured. And I added a couple other pieces of driftwood from this ball python's previous enclosure. Giving it a nice place to wrap around and bask in the heat lamp. Now I begin cutting away at the foam to thin it out and make it look a lot more natural. Being very careful not to remove the foam where it is holding the cork into place. Want to leave plenty of support and strength. I also used a lot of foam so that I could cut into it and make different ledges, little levels for the snake to bask or climb around on. This could be time intensive and I used a serrated steak knife to cut through the foam, but a sharp pocket knife would work as well. Don't worry about any gaps or bubbles as they will add to the natural look and be covered in silicone and substrate in the end. I'm cutting away from the top of the enclosure so I can hide tubes and cords there. This makes a big mess, so have a trash can and vacuum nearby. Now I've got my Dremel out with a sanding attachment to smooth out any edges and give it a more natural rock look to it. Now this does cause a lot of particles to be flung up into the air, so I'm wearing eye protection and a breathing respirator for safety. Now I did not show the process of putting on the silicone and the background substrate, but I've covered that in multiple videos in the past that I will link at the end of this video.
and any gaps or cracks or places that the substrate didn't adhere to, I just add little dots of silicone to fill in those spaces and shove in substrate or sphagnum moss. For the background, I used a mix of Reptosoil, Jungle Mix, Sphagnum Moss, Excavator Clay, and the Exoterra Desert Sand. Essentially just a bunch of substrate that just had a little bit left of each kind, mixed it all together, and it made a very cool looking mix. Now it's time to add in the plants. I'm not exactly sure what species of plants these are, but they're the same plants that I've been using in this enclosure for a while. I also take cuttings from other bioactive enclosures I have, let those plants develop some roots, and use them to grow in these bioactive enclosures. Now I already have Porcilio scaber isopods in this substrate, and we'll be adding springtails a little bit later. Now once I got the plants in there and wrapped around the branches, I go ahead and add the hides. And start filling in with additional substrate and sphagnum moss. Now an integral part of the bioactive enclosure is adding microorganisms and I'm using the BioDudes BioShot. It has healthy bacteria and microorganisms which really keep the soil alive. Mix it in really well. A little extra sphagnum moss, both for looks, gives it some nice texture, and helps maintain some humidity without having to keep the substrate damp. And I am adding both tropical springtails and a more temperate springtail because I wasn't sure which species would thrive in this enclosure. I put the temperate springtails on the dry, warm side of the enclosure and on the more damp side, I added the tropical springtails. But I also crossed them a little bit just in case one thrives over the other. Now I dropped in the temperature probe for the thermostat that will regulate the heat of the heat lamp. Add some purified water and Reptisafe into the water bowl. And then move in Frank the Ball Python. And there we go. He seems to enjoy this enclosure a whole lot.
10 minute video, but the entire process took about a week. You gotta let the great stuff cure for at least 24 hours. You also need to let the silicone cure for at least 24 hours for it to harden. But I also let it sit for a few days so all the fumes would dissipate before moving in any of the plants, and especially before moving in the snake. Now, if you wanna watch my other naturalistic background builds and see the process of adhering the background with silicone, I will link those videos right here. And if you wanna catch up on my latest video, I'll put that one right there. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Hit that like button if you like snakes, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>